So we have decided to go to Cheetah Plains again and just arriving in the area we have found a Styx lioness that looks extremely full. She was moving around before getting down again and her belly is very 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 bloated so they must have had a good meal at some stage. I think there are more lionesses around. I think there are three in the area. Um, we only have seen this one but we'll keep scanning around maybe one of them moves and we pick up where they are and we can have a look at the others another very successful morning When is the last time that the Styx lionesses were seen? Maybe some of the viewers can help me with that. I hear everyone is very excited to see them again. For me, it's the first time to see the Styx Pride as well, so it's it's very exciting to get to know yet another new group of animals that I haven't spent time with yet. Cardinal, thank you very much. So you're saying these, or well, this pride has got two cubs and then the three lionesses. So better keep looking around and see if any of the others want to show themselves. Let's see. Let's hope this female moves and finds them for us, leads us to them. Lily, you would like to know how long a canine of a lion is. It looks enormous. That is probably maybe an inch or so, maybe a little bit longer than an inch. And that is probably only tooth or a third of what, yeah, you know, maybe half of the entire tooth. So inside the jaw, the roots, all of that is quite long so let's make it an inch and a half to just over that I don't think it'll touch two inches that's quite quite long but it is big it's very big um, you are welcome to maybe look around on the internet and search for a male lion coalition called the Charleston males there's one of those males that had one of his canines pulled out. I think it was in a fight or maybe hunting giraffe. One of the two. Um, I think he was first seen with this tooth out on a giraffe carcass. So let's, let's work on the giraffe hunt that pulled the tooth out. But see if you can find a picture of that. And that will give you an idea of how much still goes in to the jaw and is stuck in without us being able to see it.
Folks, while we keep looking around for these other lions, we're going to head back over to Bushwalk with Brent and see what he's up to. This nest is so well camouflaged. Herbie, who's out keeping us safe, spotted it while I was scuttering about looking for butterflies. Now, it's so camouflaged. Dave's lost it. No, I'm joking. Of course he hasn't. There we go. You can see there we go. A little green pigeon sitting on the nest on the edge of quarantine. There we go. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. They are absolutely stunning birds. Well, we're going to have to keep an eye on this nest now that we know what it is. Now, on yesterday's sunset safari, uh, I said I had forgotten my checklist, and there was a few we saw that we needed to check off. And uh, some of the more common ones, like the African monarch. And then I'll do a quick count to see how we're doing for this summer season. African monarch, tick. Uh, what else did we see yesterday? Here we go. I'm sure we'll see another one of those possibly today. I'm trying to oh, brown veined white was another one that we got. So we have found a second lioness. The two of them are together in the shade here, just resting up. And I would guess that the other one has gone to maybe feed the cubs. So I don't know where that might be. Maybe in this drainage line behind the two lionesses. She's busy feeding the cubs. We haven't had any audio or any noise coming from them or her trying to contact the other two. So maybe she's around, maybe not. Who knows? Maybe she'll bring out the cubs after feeding. We'll have to wait and see. This one has still got a bit of dirt on her face from whatever they were eating. You can see on her left cheek there's dried up blood I wonder what meal they had So it's been almost a month of not seeing the sticks until today. So as far as I understand, the 27th of November is the last time that the sticks were seen. It's quite a long time not to have seen them. James, thank you very, very much for your information there. Thank you for the update on that. I really appreciate the help from all the viewers out there teaching me a little bit about all the different lion prides and leopards. It's great to get all this knowledge from, from all of you. <laughs> Aqua, thank you very much for that comment. Um, yeah, Aqua is saying that I've got the big cat touch. We've had a couple of very, very, very lucky drives. I don't think I must get too ahead of myself. Your luck can always change, but the last couple of days have been really great, and I don't think it's got as much to do with me as the animals wanting to show themselves to us so we've just been in the right place at the right time and had a look at them but it's all thanks to them and not really anything to do with me I just enjoy finding them it's a lot of fun but um, yeah they are the ones that are making it possible if it wasn't for their cooperation we would be sitting with a lot less animals. It's quite interesting 
the difference in behavior in animals in in areas where humans don't come a lot so on some of the the backpack trails that I have done we've had lion encounters and normally they just run off at the first sight of you they run off first of all you're on foot you're not in a vehicle so they're not used to the the human presence on foot and the shape and everything tells them there is a possibility of danger and they move off quite quickly and then you come to an area like the Sabi Sands where there's a lot more activity, vehicle activity, even people tracking them on foot quite often and they react very differently and it's nice to be able to to view them like this, see, see them as laid back as they are with our presence. I remember this one particular morning on a backpack trail we were the night before we were sitting in camp and we had two lionesses walking past us in the Lataba River and um, they walked straight to a crocodile that was outside of the water, played with that a bit, walked around it and then they moved on and the entire night we had two different male lions roaring one coming closer to camp, coming closer to camp the entire night. I woke up at around four o'clock and it sounded like this guy was standing right outside of my tent. And he moved on again. When we started walking that morning, we picked up on his tracks and we started following. We lost the tracks, <clears throat> excuse me, and just made a little loop around and the next minute we just heard a grunt. <laughs> And that was the only sign of this lion that we had. He just ran off. We found tracks again and you can just see the stride length going as he was running away from us, not wanting anything to do with us. So he must have spotted us before we saw him. And off he went in a flash. Folks, we're going to head back over to Brent on Bushwalk and see how he's doing with his butterfly list if he's been able to tick off a couple more. Alright, just um, before we head out of Cheetah Plains we decided to come have a look and see if the third Styx Lioness and the Cubs wanted to join up with the other two. It doesn't look like they have, it's just these two still that we've got uh, any visual of. The others are either still hiding in these drainage systems around us or might be further off and um, doing their own thing. So yeah, but while we are, uh, let's enjoy these two ladies. They're just resting up in a bit of shade, trying to stay as cool as they can. Michael, you would like to know if I know if any of these females have mated with the Birmingham boys in the recent times, maybe when they were up in Juma the other day. Not that I'm aware of, but Viam and I have been sitting here and discussing it. They look quite full, but almost overly full, so... I'm not saying it is the case, but there is a possibility that maybe one of these females are pregnant. Just look at that be at that that be belly, oh, tongue twisting there. <laughs> um, yeah, so who knows? Maybe we'll have to wait and find out. We'll have to keep a close eye, eye on them over the next couple of months and see if. Um, if they are going to give birth to any new cubs. 
gestation with lions is about three months so if she was pregnant and her belly is big like that already she could maybe be a month and a half to two month preg months pregnant new cubs gestation with lions is about three months so if she was pregnant and her belly is big like that already she could maybe be a month and a half to two month preg months pregnant so it's all still a mystery until we see some new babies or if we don't in the next month or so see any babies then we know she was just full when we saw them today. These Styx lions, how far do they go south into the Sabi Sands? I've heard of the Styx pride before, but I can't remember when I worked down in the south if I saw them. I think it was, no, the ones we saw was the Sparta pride every now and then, yeah. No, it's not the Styx. So they are completely new to me. Lucy, you would like to know how long after mating they um, start showing they're pregnant, that they are pregnant and, you know, it's, I think it depends on the state of the animal as well. Maybe if they're very full, you might struggle seeing a bit, it a bit more. But when they thin, you'll see that the, the belly is a bit more bloated and normally a bit I think about a month and a half after that after the mating that you'd really start seeing it and be able to tell and as it goes closer to the end the mammary glands will start swelling and then you will start seeing and being able to recognize it a lot easier folks I think we're going to start heading back, start leaving Cheetah Plains. While we make our way back to Juma, we're going to head over to Taylor and see what she's up to.